This is my Milwaukee dust extractor. I'm a big fan of this thing, and I'm also a big fan of Milwaukee Packout, but unfortunately, they don't work together. To fix that, I thought I'd use a Packout plate and make some custom brackets that would help me mount this all together to make a more integrated system. To start out, I took a Packout plate that I bought from Home Depot, and I sort of marked out how I'd want to modify it so I could still use the top handle on the vacuum. Now, this is a Milwaukee branded dust extractor, but you might recognize it because it's very similarly made by a couple other companies. This one just happens to be red and branded by Milwaukee. So first I cut it out with a jigsaw and then I used an oscillating tool to kind of cut the bottom of the pack out plate so that it would be a little more ergonomic to your hand. Now the way I'm going to build this, I don't think I'm going to need this center structure. So I have a feeling that the thing is still going to be structurally strong. And you'll see a little bit later in the video that I actually plan on having the entire plate resting on top of the vacuum. So I'm really just doing this so I can get my hand in there. So you can see how it's kind of going to line up. It's going to sit on top of the vacuum. Now, obviously, it's going to stick out over the sides, but I think I'm okay with that because adding this functionality is going to make this vacuum way more usable for me on a job site. And making it a little bit bigger isn't really going to make a big difference. Now, what I have in my hand there is some two inch by quarter inch aluminum that I got from Online Metals. And I'm just tracing out sort of where I want this to mount. Now I went over and drilled some holes in this and then tapped them with a quarter 20 drill tap over on the tapping arm. And you'll see why in a little bit, but basically what I'm gonna be doing here is bolting the pack out plate to these aluminum struts and then using the accessory mounting holes on the sides of this vacuum to permanently or at least semi-permanently mount the pack out plate to the top of the vacuum. Now the whole point here is that I'm still going to need to be able to take this off so that I can service the vacuum and change the filters. So I'm going to be utilizing these two little accessory holes that are on either side of the vacuum with some downward facing metal plates that are going to get drilled and tapped so that I can take these on and pull them off. Again, I'm using some two by quarter inch thick aluminum and I'm just making these little plates and then I'm going to deburr them, drill some holes in them and then tap them with the same quarter 20. Now there are some accessories that you can buy for this that clip into there, but none of them are going to work with pack out. So I'm just making my own. You can see how they're going to sit in there. And once I kind of get them wedged, I'm able to make some marks and kind of figure out where they're going to hit the bottom of the aluminum that's on the bottom of the plate. I drill some quarter inch holes in these little plastic tabs, and those will be for some quarter inch button head screws that'll secure this whole thing to the top of the vacuum. When this is all done, you'll be able to take out the four screws and then you could basically lift this whole assembly off, change the filters or do whatever else you need to the actual vacuum. I drill these out with a number seven drill bit over on the drill press and then I'm gonna go over to the tapping arm and tap these as well. Now I've worked with aluminum a bunch in the past and I've done some welding projects and some fabricating projects in aluminum, but I've never had to TIG weld aluminum that's this thick. And this is where I kind of run into some problems in a little bit. Now, I guess I just underestimated how much heat the aluminum was going to need. So you'll see kind of my plan and the way I tried to execute it didn't really work out, but we're going to fix it. You can see the way those little pieces bolt into the side. And then here's where I went wrong. I thought this was basically like a piece of steel and I could tack this on. And then from there, I could go ahead and fully weld it. What I didn't realize was I was sinking so much heat into the aluminum that it melted those little brackets. Now this basically killed the entire job or it could have if I didn't kind of recover from it but I melted off the only way I was planning on mounting this whole thing to the vacuum. So I busted out some of the pieces that I had cut out of the pack out plate and I actually used this little plastic welding kit to mend those tabs that I had melted with the TIG welder. So I cut it out with the oscillating tool and then I used one of these little plastic welding things that you can buy on Amazon. You've probably seen videos online of the, them using these to fix bumpers. Basically, it's just a little heat charged kind of like little metal clip that gets red hot through induction or just through basically shorting it out inside that little soldering iron looking thing. And then you jam it into the metal. The plastic melts around it. And then when it's all done, you clip off the excess and grind it flush. This is the same sort of flexible plastic. I don't know the compound, but this is what I cut off the pack out plate. And it actually held up really well and it's super strong. I don't love that it's the wrong color, but you're probably never gonna notice it, so who cares? Anyway, this saved the project and allowed me to keep going. So basically what I'm gonna be doing here is just making a really secure and very accurate tracing of where these little plates need to go on the bottom of the aluminum and then try to weld this whole assembly not inside the plastic housing probably should have started at this place. If it was steel, I bet I could have gotten away with it, but with the aluminum just taking so much heat, especially being so thick, 
It just wasn't going to happen. Now, I'm not the greatest aluminum TIG welder, but I'm able to get by. And this material was definitely harder to weld because it was just so hot. At least the weld had to be so hot. I was having trouble getting the material hot as it needed to be. And therefore, I was having trouble bonding my base metal. But I guess if you wanted to make something like this, you could pretty easily just drill and tap these from the top down. You could use a small, maybe a number six screw, and you probably get a strong enough mechanical fastening connection that you wouldn't need to do the welding. But I always like trying a new process and trying to get better at a process that I'm already familiar with. So doing some aluminum corner joints like this is always good and helps me kind of just brush up all my TIG welding skills. By the time I got to the last weld, I realized that I really needed to get the material hot. I probably could have preheated it and it would have made things a little easier. But either way, I think it turned out acceptable, especially because you're probably never going to see it. So after welding all that up, you can see the way it slips right into those two little spots. Now I clamped things pretty well so there wasn't a lot of warping. And basically just by tightening those two button head screws, you can see this whole assembly just kind of slides right on. And now you can also notice that this is completely flush with the top of the vacuum. So by putting in some more Allen head screws, you can see the way the pack out plate mounts right on there. And there's just a little bit of trimming left to do before this is essentially done. All I had to do at this point was take off the plate and trim the little excess, but you can see basically how it works. I actually wanted this very specifically to be facing kind of towards the left when I put the crate on. I don't know why, but to me it seemed like it made more sense. And I just trimmed down the little excess of the aluminum that was there, and I rounded over the corners with a flap disc and made it look nice and nice and clean. Obviously, you don't want to get cut up by this thing. But what's nice is since it's aluminum, I don't have to paint it and I don't have to worry about it ever rusting or corroding. The last thing I had to do was reinstall these little clips that hold the actual vacuum hose, which just fit underneath the aluminum plates that I put on there. And I can wrap the hose around it, still use the clips, and then I can kind of tuck it into itself, which works really well. You can see the way a pack out bin goes right into it. And it's nice because I can set up a set of drawers and put a bin on top if I'm doing sanding or whatever. And essentially I can use this as another pack out dolly. The pack out dollies are about $100 to begin with. And this vacuum was $250 if I remember incorrectly. I bought it used. And now with this setup, I basically killed two birds with one stone. I've got a way to bring tools to a job site on my dust extractor that I'm already using. And I like the fact that it's still a plug-in extractor. It makes it easy to get upstairs by kind of kicking it back. And even though I put that plate on there, you can still get to the cord wrap over on the back of the vacuum cleaner. Overall, I'm really happy with this. It's just a better system than just sort of stacking things up and letting them fall down. And I honestly can't believe that Milwaukee hasn't come out with something that would do this without all this work. Hope you enjoyed this. See you on the next video.